Hi, I'm Paul Belsito. And I'm Stephen Roach. And you're watching The Talk, Talk of Stars. Stars. Welcome everyone, and joining me today is award-winning actress, author, and producer, Kathy Garber. Yeah. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Steve. It's absolutely delightful to be here in Palm Springs. So relaxing in the lounge bed. I am and by poolside. So poolside, I'm soaking it all up. I think we're going to have to toast to that. Toast to that. Here's absolutely. to a beautiful morning for you all. Cheers, everyone. So in 1956, Legendary producer Cecil B. DeMille produced the Ten Commandments, the Oscar winning Ten Commandments, and that was your start of your entire career. So tell us how that came about. Well, I had just been hired as an extra. Who knew what that was even? Because I was just starting out my career. I had done a film before that, The Night of the Hunter. The Night of the Hunter. But this, going on to Paramount's. Uh, Studios and seeing all the animals and the oxen and the mules. So I was supposed to be in this little wagon during the exodus and um, I'm in my place and doing what a, a good little girl should do and all of a sudden I hear this voice says, don't let that little girl's face get in the camera. Oh my gosh, you messed up the shot? That's you what, be the middle. Well, I, that's what I thought. You're fired. I, I knew it. I was so worried. I said, what did I do wrong? I'm sitting here with my little lamb and everything. <laughs> I haven't got Rebecca. Here's the kneading trough. Swing it on your shoulders. This is a blessed day. Where's Rebecca? Here's Rebecca. And Caleb. Hi, Jim. Can we take the cattle? Moving to the gates. Horn and all. Rachel, help me with this brick yoke. Benjamin, hey, don't forget the oil. And so... Why he did that was he said he and, and Cecil B. DeMille was wont to do this because the big epics, you know, could have been far away from the actual emotion and you know of a relatable person. So he would pick out people from the hordes of people and, and write scenes for them. Wow. And I was one of the people that he decided to pick out. I've never heard that. That's great. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So I was blessed. We were doing a, a very biblical <laughs> movie. And uh, so I did that particular scene, and then afterwards I met with him, and you know, well, I, I, you know, I'm seven years old, but this was a big <laughs> nanny. I thought it was five, you know, because <laughs> he was on a crane and came down. And but he, he, cinematic beauty. We talked, and then he wrote scenes into the movie for me with Charlton Heston, wow. who remained my friend, you know, until he died. And. 
I still had this fabulous picture with um, Charlton Heston and me on this paper mache mountain at Paramount. And he was kind enough, even though he had to mention I sent him some pictures and he signed his name to all of them, uh, you know, so I could take them to autograph shows or whatever and they have, you know, the best one that I, of course, save for me in my upcoming museum. I think I'll stick that in, in with the Sissy Museum, the family affair museum. And is this a milestone year for the Ten Commandments? It is, like everything in this year for me, so celebratory, 65th anniversary. Wow. And you know, they show that movie every single Easter and it has been colorized or whatever. And it still, it, it even grows in its audience show. And it, it resonates with people. So there's something about classic things like the Bible, family affair. <laughs> yeah, and actually Cecil B. DeMille became famous for doing these bits big biblical epics, correct? Oh, sure, like Ben-Hur, mm -hmm. and yeah. He won, uh, Charles Heston won his Best Actor Oscar for Ben-Hur, that's right. That's right, yeah. So he was a fabulous, fabulous actor, and I remember one of my, again, mentors, Jimmy Doolittle, that had the James Doolittle Theater, and oh, then yeah. became the Model Bond Theater, yeah. and at his funeral, uh, and when he, at his burial in Charlton, because he was friends, very big friends with Charlton Heston, and Charlton Heston gets up, and gives the most beautiful, moving eulogy. Because you wonder sometimes about these actors. I certainly do. Oh, they cut this and they cut that. And well, the director says, well, on your 15th take, all right, maybe we'll, we'll go with that. He gets up there with nothing around but, you know, like little kills. And gave this uh, Shakespearean of monologue that was just oh. still memorable. I can still see him. Wow. I can still hear him. So. Um, Cecil B. DeMille was working with some great talent. Wow. You know? <laughs> but it was Absolutely. our and Yul Brenner and, and Deborah Padgett, That's et cetera. Right. And, and little me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kathy, tell us uh, how did Family Fair come about? How did you find out about the audition? Well, I've been working like all my life. And at that point, I was at UCLA in my third year. And I have the same agent, Hazel McMillan. And my mom gives me a call and says, oh, you've got an audition for a series. And the series is pretty sold. And they want to see you this afternoon to meet the producer. And I said, oh, OK. And she says, I'll come and get you and take you to Hollywood. And she says, the only thing is, they want a blonde. blonde. Well, now I have lovely blonde curly locks. <laughs> But at that time, I had dark hair. I was playing Indians and uh. Italian girls and all of that. So my mother brings over this stuff called the streaks and tips. Now, you might be a little young, but in the 60s, they had the spray-on stuff. You put it on your hair, and it instantly changes the color. Okay. But it kind of changed my hair color not to blonde, but like gold. And I look like something out of golf, and you, and you go like this, like this gold helmet. And she's like, we've got to go. And I said, okay. So she takes me to Hollywood. I'm meeting with Ed Hartman, the creator-producer. And we're chatting. What's the matter with your hair? I said, my hair? And he says, it's turning green. I said, oh, must be the, the light. <laughs> well, that kind of broke the ice, and we chatted. And plus, I think I look like his daughter, but <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's great. Right, that helps. And so the next next thing I'm, I know, and they are already starting to shoot the pilot, but they had oh, wow. Brian, Keith, and Sebastian Cabot, and the, and the kids, but they need a teenage daughter. And I believe that they had cast it once, but she'd gone to Europe and come back and gain like 10 pounds, and they said, oh, this might not do. <laughs> So they were, you know, anxiously trying to find someone because wow. they were already in production. So that helped me, I think. And then I did a screen test and I got this long blonde wig and was wearing this blue and white checked dress, like something out of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> and so my mom, you know, calls me back in two days and she says, all right, you've got the part, but they say, never wear that dress and never wear that wig again. And that is how I got the part. Okay, over to your room, Jody. Good night, you guys. Good night. Good night. And you hop into bed, miss. Good night, Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill? I just wanted to tell you, I think you're the smartest person in the whole world. 
something smarter than Miss Pringle? <sighs> Much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, before you were actually cast and they, they told you um, you absolutely were in, did you have to read with the rest of the cast? No. The chemistry? Or they just cast you? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and while I was, um, I did do one other thing. They were shooting the pilot. I went onto the set and I uh, was with the director. And he just wanted to get a sense of my personality. Well, I had been you know, looking around the, the set and seeing things as I want to do. I feel like a little doggy at times when I'm in a new place. I'm just, you know, sniffing at my territory, what's on the, you know, what's happening here. And so I went up and he says, well, and I saw you looking around the set. And what did you, oh, I love the pictures on the wall. And it was so pretty. And I go to UCLA and I'm into art and blah, 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 blah. And so they said, okay, she's good. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's better. great. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's how I got that part. And I had a whole history. And another reason, I think, I had done an episode of Death Valley Days. Death Valley Days, where Western history comes alive. Where I was supposed to play Isidore Duncan. And I was actually 18 when I did that, playing a 12-year-old. You'll never guess that you're only 12 years old today. I don't look at him. Shh. I'll die if he looks at me again. I will just absolutely die. Thank you, Vernon. Thank you, Vernon. He gets embarrassed and goes away when I talk to him. He's very shy. Well, it's just possible that being at least ten years older than you are, it's your wide-eyed adoration of him that's embarrassing him. I told him I'm going on sixteen. Dorita, you're 12 years old today. Shh, he'll hear you. Were you ever in love? Oh, yes. Even lady librarians fall in love. Especially if they're uh, part-time poets. Do you ever see the man you love? No. No, it was all over before you were born. Go on now. Finish up. I have to get back to the library. Did he break your heart? Dorita, hearts don't break. They just find a dark corner and hide. That's so romantic. I may hide. <laughs> we'll try to survive until after you've read your play tonight. There's a gentleman coming especially to hear it. Who? Well, uh, he's a little bit older than Vernon. But ladies usually find him quite irresistible. You don't mean Joaquin Miller? Yes. <laughs> Miss Colbert, why do you do so many things for me? Well, perhaps because I'll never have a daughter of my own. I wish I had you for my mother. <laughs> Joaquin Miller. I may die! And they said, well, if she's 18 playing a 12-year-old, she can be, you know, 20 playing a 15-year-old. So that helped. And they saw I was a really good actress. And I could do it with my Oh, I could do it with that. You did, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. It was a great series, great performance, great part. Thank you. So uh, tell us uh, about your uh, Broadway experience. Well, I've not been on Broadway, but I have done plays that originated on Broadway, like My Fair Lady, which was absolutely fabulous, playing the role of Eliza Doolittle, and, you know, like, all I want is a room somewhere <laughs> far away from the cold <laughs> However, in Palm Springs, I want to be away from the warm <laughs> day air. The blistering sun. <laughs> the blistering sun. No, I love it out here. It's very, it's wonderful to be relaxed and, and have the sunshine of beauty. 
Thank you. You too. Cheers to that. Okay, you got it. Where did you get this fabulous champagne? Well, this was created by Paul and it is a lavender vanilla. And what's the name of that? What is the name of that champagne? It's the Sissy Champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I love it. And, and tell us what's, what's the ingredients of it. So it's champagne with some lavender syrup and some vanilla. And it matches actually one of your candles. So yes. tell us about your incredible candle collection. Uh, well, there are Sissy candles. And my stepson Scott makes us with CBT candles. And they are fabulous because the scent is so nice and it's lavender vanilla, would you have guessed? <laughs> <laughs> and they just fill up the room with this wonderful scent and because they're soy, they don't make like smoke and they are beautifully packaged, I think. Yeah, and I love the packaging. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Nice. It's, it's really nice. And they come in the big size and the medium size and they're really tins. And plus, we have a room spray and a lotion. Sissy, that's the Sissy collection. And this is the Sissy, Sissy Champagne. champagne. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to order Sissy Candles and other merchandise, you can just go to, and there it is. You can buy Surviving Sissy at my website, www.kathygarber.com or Amazon. And don't forget, Sissy, that one. in creating and playing the role of Sissy for five seasons. So how did you develop the character and how is she was she similar to you in real life and how was she completely different than than you? Well I think whatever character you develop, you have a portion of yourself. I mean you can't manufacture, you're not a hologram, you're not a robot. So you have to not only call on your own emotions, how you would particularly Act, you know, react and act to a situation. And you know that with the framework of the character. And here she was a sweet, nice, wholesome girl, as you know I am. <laughs> <laughs> no. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, that sissy, you know, I, I as have grown and, and given her a little bit more backbone. But she was a really nice person. I'm a very nice person. I really am, um, to are. begin with. And so that kind of fit in. So she was an amalgam of both myself and what the writers had in mind. And through the years, we kind of grew with that as well. Some of the, the, uh, the scenes and some of the shows that I did were interesting because I would have all these different boyfriends. And I would always plead with the producers. I said, I want a little older boyfriend. Now, bear in mind, 
that I was really five years older than oh, Sissy. That's right. So when Sissy is 15, <laughs> I'm 20. <laughs> when, like, at the bring end, it on. <laughs> when, at the end of the show, I'm 25. And so I don't want this like, you know. 16 year old. 16 year old. <laughs> and I remember the producer saying and the director said, now Kathy, you have to remember, you're playing a character. She's only 17. Okay, all right. <laughs> but some of the ones that they paired me up with were not not probably someone that Kathy would go out with, but I love the inside of anybody, so it didn't matter. And there was always that connection. So I would look at that the, the same way, and and I would never like hurt anybody's feelings. And I said, oh, you know, I really like you, but I just don't think it's right. And be sincere about that, mm -hmm. you know. And and I did. I I liked all all of my boyfriends, but. <laughs> my dearest one was, was um, Greg Federson, who was the son of the producer, and Greg played my boyfriend. Well, Greg did not have a lot of experience, but he was the dearest thing, and I just loved him to pieces, and we would get the giggles, because here I was, there, I, I was very innocent, you know, and I, and so I think it was a lot, a lot of suppressed and repressed sexual tension because <laughs> we started dating in real life but we would go to lovely you know lovely dinners and this and that but you know it was maybe a kiss good night and that was the way sissy was too <laughs> but now i'm grown up and i've been married for 40 years so <laughs> good change and happy anniversary <laughs> thank you so i'm curious kathy so how did you go from acting and producing to uh writing books well, an actress life is very interesting in many aspects. You know, you do a movie and then you say, where's my next, next movie? <laughs> you know, or a TV series, okay. Or a stage play, or I've done five animated series, you know, voiceover. So during that long time, and then especially when COVID was, uh, there was some time. Now, so, not one to remain idle. <laughs> I said, what, what can I do? So my first book, was a cookbook because I love to cook and I love to eat. And this was the family affair cookbook where, love that. yeah, it's, it was so much fun to write. Each character has his or her own chapter given the aspects of the character. So Mr. French had gourmet meals and, <laughs> and I had sissy sizzles meals. The kids uh, have rough recipes were very easy to make type things. And um, Brian Keith would have loved this because his is potent potables, how to uh, make Manhattans. And as oh. you know, our, our, our friend Paul Belcito, who makes fabulous, fabulous kind of cocktails. I've used, heard of him. Yeah, yeah. He, he used the uh, Brian uh, recipe for Manhattans, That's right. which he made just the other day. So, Not these, but yeah. <laughs> so that was my first book. And then I wanted to uh, write my memoir. So I took this class, actually, and I went every week, which helped me, and it was called Writing Your Memoirs. But out of it came this wonderful book called Surviving Sissy, and I did to live to tell book. about it and be in Palm Springs with my friend Steve and friends and um, also so Paul. And this book sold very well and is actually still on Amazon, but so well that the publisher Roman and Littlefield are bringing it out this year in paperback version. Oh, excellent. And that's to help celebrate the 50th anniversary of Family Affair, which is odd because you know I am 39. We've had a discussion exactly. about Exactly. I can't believe it, it was that, that far back in time. <laughs> because what did you, I say I'm 39, and what do you say? 38. Yes! <laughs> this is why I know, Steve. <laughs> So continuing on the, oh, I, then my third book was, I'm out of it at the moment, I'm getting more next week, is Ex-Child Stars, Where Are They Now? And that tells you Great that. concept, actually. Well, yeah, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, what happened to these kids? Good things and bad things. And then continuing with the cooking theme, my next book was Holiday Recipes for a Family Affair. So each uh, month, has every month has a holiday and if it's exactly. not you can make one up with this book but <laughs> it, it addresses wonderful recipes for the holidays and this year um, as I say the the um, paperback version of Surviving Sissy is coming out and I have two new books one is a cookbook called TV Dinners TV which is going to go along with the show 
that that we are doing. We've made the pilot for already. Oh, what a great idea! Yeah, it's really yeah. Because you remember <laughs> those TV dinners oh, with the yes. aluminum trays? <laughs> well, we're taking those and making healthy meals out of them, and then interviewing classic stars, and uh, those coalesce, and we have this wonderful, fun retro show. Um, and in a retro kitchen with retro clothes, and it is just oh, a wonderful, neat. simple, fun step back in time for a little bite of nostalgia. And then... You can't wait for that show. Oh, that. It's, it's going to be great. It's really, really fun. And then the other book that's coming out is um, Family Affair, a pictorial scrapbook. And again, because it's the 55th anniversary of... Uh, family, but, but I don't know because I'm only 39, right, Steve? Yeah, so how does that work? Matt? Well, I was, I've been terrible in math on my life. Well, so. I guess that's it. It's the magic of Hollywood. It's exactly. And so this, I was going through all of mem my memorabilia and taking photos to include in the book, and then I thought, oh, well, we have to do a museum exhibit of this. So I will be uh, going across different places now that things are open, and we'll have a museum exhibit at the um, uh, San Fernando Relic Museum. I am not a relic. <laughs> the Relic <laughs> Museum. And we'll show all of the family up there, memorabilia, and have book signings for it there. The Chicago uh, Museum of TV. And uh, we have a couple other places that we're looking at for the actual memorabilia exhibit along with the signings and then I'll do some other signings around town. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah, really fun year. And you've been collecting the memorabilia for a long time, correct? So you have a, a, a vast library of items and merchandise. You know what? I have are great friends. I thank God and I am so blessed and what supports me all through my life are my super good friends, people that you can really count on, like you guys and, and my friend Steph yeah. Jaffe. I had a wonderful friend, Robert Ludelman, who is a Hollywood historian, and bless his heart, he would get magazines, he'd send them to me, He, I, and when I was going to, oh, there's another one that's ears addressed to Robert Ludelman, and he would give me all these things, and he would tell me, he says, you have to put these in a museum someday, you know, oh. Kathy. So, I'm not going to have a museum, but I am going to have some exhibits. Wow, that's great. I mean, we have to preserve our television history, right? We really do. For future generations. Yeah. I and mean, that's it, what it's all about. You bet. And like even here in Palm Springs, to have like a TV museum would be absolutely fabulous. I thought about that. Mm. I <laughs> thought about it, too. That would be great. Mm. Absolutely wonderful. I have done 80 audio books. And I've wow. won four audio awards. Wow. Congrats. Thank that's you. Right. Thank you. Thank that's you very right. much. My latest one, which I absolutely adore, is In the Presence of Greatness by Bill Jankowski. And I did the audio book, and it's about Patty Hugh. That's right, it's her biography. Yes, and he did a series of interviews with her. Now, Patty, I had done the Patty Duke show, and I was oh, played her right. friend that's Monica. Right. I'm getting tell me you're having trouble with a boy. I'll say. I see an H. That's right. H A. H E. Henry! <laughs> That's right. She's fantastic. Yeah, isn't she? Is it going to work out all right? Yes. He's headstrong, but he's very, very fond of you. What happens in the next week is of the utmost importance. What do you mean? You must return next Friday and tell me everything that has happened. I will. How much is that? There's no charge, my dear. Just whatever you want to contribute to further the good work. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll uh, see you at the shake shop, Monica. Okay. And ever since the 60s, I had known her. We were friends. She wrote the foreword to my Surviving Sissy book. And so when I'm recording this book, it's almost like her spirit was guiding me. And I kind of took on her voice when I was doing, as opposed to the narrator's voice, as opposed to like some guys that I, I put in there and some younger people and, and melded them all. And um, it's, it's really, I think it came out so nicely. And, and of course it's on Amazon is and everything, but that <laughs> audio book and all my audio books are there. And for my animation, I've done five animated series, but I love the fact that I created the voice of Firestar 
in Spider-Man oh, and right. his amazing friends for Marvel. Or someone tried to land a 747 here. Looks like he's gone underground. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Now, Firestar, I will teach you to make light of me. Sorry, Arachnoid, I already know how. The light, I can see. This ought to stop those eight roving feet of yours. This year, they brought out this this wonderful little six-inch action figure with, like, detachable heads. I'm not crazy about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like when, what, what was that, the Exodus turning my head around? No, she's, she's an angel, not a devil. She's a superhero. And they have the little dog, Miss Lion. Oh. It. So it's, it's a nice package. And then my um, stepson made these wonderful Firestar candles that are like cinnamon and and tangerine and just have a yeah, I love that scent. Isn't that? It's amazing. Yeah, and it's like a Firestar superhero scent. And so I think it energizes you. While my, my other candles, the, the lavender, vanilla, you know, are Very just... Very relaxing. Yes. Mellow. And, yeah, exactly. And then we have the, the, the Firestar. Yeah, the Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's marvelous, darling. It's marvelous. You're part of the Marvel universe. I am, I That's am. That's great. Yeah, and I, I do a lot of Comic Con, so everything is opening up. So I just did the Gen State Comic Con in Boise. I'm doing Terrific Con in uh, Connecticut. And a lot of the, the comic and people are so excited that they get to go out. Exactly. And they see you and you talk. You, you. There's a real person that has energy that you're actually like feeling their, their energy. So. I'm just a little happy camper. I couldn't be more relaxed with my fabulous champagne with my friends lounging on the daddy mom's wings. Thank Cheers. you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. So little birdies have told us that there's a new series on the horizon called Ant Sissy. So tell us a little bit about that whole project, how it came to be, and uh, where are you with the whole process of that? Well, it's very exciting. You know, they tried to do a sequel. Uh, some years ago, and that just doesn't work. I, I don't think reboots with older cast work as well as having an original character. So, again, my very talented stepson, who makes the candles, also conceived of Aunt Sissy. Aunt Sissy. So we have the pilot, and it's, it's really well done. And we are now working with the grandson of the creator, well, Mr. Hartman, I told you about, with the hair. Oh, yeah. oh and wow, that's pretty. Yeah, and he's right here in the desert. And so there are a couple of different spin-offs from the original and Sissy and into the family affair. And we are working with Warner Brothers who are the right and that That's is just exciting. proceeding so well. As I say, this is a really wonderful year. It's gonna be a big us. year. And Absolutely. I think for everybody. We've got our spirits back. We, we're coming we, back. We, we're we're really coming back. So congratulations. And I also have a cooking show on um, YouTube called and with my uh, co-author of this book, Scott Weaver, and Scott. we have mm -hmm. Cooking with Scott and Kathy and friends. Hi, I'm Kathy Gardner and I'm Scott Weaver. And together we've put together a wonderful compilation of some of our favorite recipes. Yep, recipes that have been handed down to us from our family members to things that we've discovered over the years we love and our families love as well. And we're hoping you do too. Everything from New Year's to Christmas. Yes. <laughs> so that's on YouTube. And I'm just starting a thing on my Facebook called uh, where I read every week and with these two teddy bears called Paige and Turner starting out with children's books and then I going up the ladder. <laughs> so I really love to connect with people and, and, and friends, and this is for the younger kids and the grown-ups. We're going to get up, no, maybe X-rated ones, but we're going up the ladder to adult books. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, it's important, I think, that um, I mean, everyone should experience the joy of reading. And nowadays, with so much, uh, you know, 450... TV, cable channels, and social media, it's, you know, especially kids, you know, they're, they're reading, but they're, they're reading everything on their phone. They're not picking up a, an actual, you know, book and holding it in their hand. I think that's really important, and we can't lose that. Yes, I agree with you so much, and with the book, you see the beginning and the, what happens at the end, 
And I think that's why Family Affair was so popular and classic today. They have a problem, you see how we're going to fix it, you fix it, and you come down. And just that knowledge, and you get them in the, the children's books, or you get them with actual words. I mean, you've got to learn to read the words before you can read Facebook. And, That's right. You know, That's right. <laughs> and that enticing way to read, I think, you know, helps the kids along the way. That's great. I totally agree. Do you want to know where you can get my things? Yes. So tell everybody if you want to order your books, candles, where do we go? Well, I tell you where you should go. You should go to. You're telling me where to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you to go and have a good time. That's okay. what I tell you. Okay. And if, during that good time, <laughs> you can go to my happygarver.com, which is my website that has all my books. They have all the photos. They have the candles. And when you go to my site, as opposed to Amazon. You can, I can autograph them all. I can autograph the, the candles, I can autograph the book, and you can go where? Up there. Up there. Well, thank you, Kathy, for being on our thank show. Thank you, loved it. Appreciate it. Thank and you. And good luck on all your upcoming endeavors. Thank you, I appreciate it, Steve. Right, cheers again. And Paul and <laughs>